Welcome to the Fish North Georgia podcast, where we talk everything fishing here in North Georgia. Make a cast over that brush pot and bring wolf packs of spotted bass up. Georgia is blessed with so many of these electric only lakes. No, I didn't say that, Danny. Don't, okay, don't so, be speculating uh, now. So hey guys, welcome to the Fish North Georgia podcast. We're here doing another mini cast. We are here with our guest, fisheries biologist Shannon Gorman. And Shan, the topic today the food chain. Mm. So let's get specific and let's talk about the food chain in a given body of water. Well, let's start. The food chain starts with phytoplankton. And phytoplankton is a single-celled algae. Okay. okay. It's interesting because you can put a glass of water on your back porch and go at, come back in a couple of days and put it under a microscope. It'll have phytoplankton in it. And we don't know how it gets there. No answer. It just shows up. It does. And... At least I've never seen anything of the, unless they've proven it, you know, in the last five years or so. Right. I don't know. But water has plankton. Okay. And it's the, it, it really drives the whole system. Okay. So what does the plankton do? The, the phytoplankton is, I guess, what we said is an algae. And it has chlorophyll, like any plant. Okay. And it takes carbon dioxide out of the water and it produces oxygen. And that's a process called photosynthesis, mm -hmm. just well, like a tree. Yes, I <laughs> we remember that from school. Yes, yeah. we're going back to third grade now, third right. grade physical science class. Right. Okay. So just like trees produce oxygen that we breathe, phytoplankton produces the oxygen that fish breathe. Okay. Okay. The plankton will respire at night. We respire. We breathe. You know, that's what respiration is. And the, the plankton shifts over. So at nighttime, it uses oxygen. At the daytime, it produces it. Really? Mm -hmm. And why is that? No, it's the same. Trees do the same thing. I did not know that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It's called um, respiration. That's how they work. It's just it's just how it's how it works. Okay. So what you get with that is a fluctuation in the oxygen, right? Because as the sun comes up, the oxygen it, the lake hasn't been, produ been producing oxygen all night, right? As this as the light hits the water. The plankton takes the light and turns it into oxygen. And to do that, it has to remove carbon dioxide. It's part, part of the process. Carbon dioxide is acidic. So as the sun comes up and oxygen begins to produce, the water becomes less acidic. And at night, it becomes more acidic, slightly. Okay. So that's called what that's called is a diurnal fluctuation or daily fluctuation. So your oxygen levels, your pH levels, they change all day long. Every minute of every day, every second of every day, that chemistry is changing all day long, okay? okay. And you can track that. You can, you can put an oxygen meter in there. You can put a pH meter in there. You can see, you know, you can see it make waves. It gets high in the afternoon. Oxygen levels get high in the afternoon. Carbon dioxide levels get low in the afternoon. Okay. Okay, and the inverse opposite happens at night, and you can track that all day long. But that's, people don't know where that's where the oxygen comes from that fish breathe. That's exactly okay. where it comes from. Right, there you go. That's good. All right, so the next next. Uh, uh, animals down the line are called zooplankton, okay? And they're just microscopic animals, and there's hundreds of them. Just boogers. Yeah, just <laughs> Daphnia and yeah, just, just we good old boys like critters. Say, critters. Yep, got some critters. In got water. some critters. And the right. critters, the critters either feed on phytoplankton or feed on other critters. Okay. There's a whole. There's some of them predatory, you know. So um, there's a whole food web there. Like you could get a PhD on zooplankton, you know, on one specific thing or whatever. That, that's another there's podcast. Hundreds and hundreds okay. of them. Yeah, we're not going on there. <laughs> um, when as scientists, um, we can collect the water, right? I can I can collect a, a bottle of water, say a gallon of water, all okay. right. And the test that we run is called chlorophyll A. And what chlorophyll A is is how much chlorophyll is in this gallon of water. Okay. Okay. And that can be spun down. You, you basically filter it and spin it and filter it and spin it. And it's a, it's kinda, a process. Kind of like they do with your blood and stuff like that. I've exactly. Seen okay. right. Exactly the same thing. But you can, you can measure the amount of chlorophyll in a gallon of water. Okay. And the amount of chlorophyll in the gallon of water is directly related to how many pounds of fish can be held in the lake. Oh, okay. The more plankton, the more fish. The less plankton, the less fish. And that's why fertilization works. And anybody who's out there who has their own pond or own lake and is thinking about fertilizing it, you're going to have to call me. Um, it's not something I can explain here, and it's not something that's easy to do. 
but you can fertilize a lake to increase productivity, but you're going to need a professional to do it. Okay. It's tricky. Can't just go to Home Depot and get some stuff and throw it out there. I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. We could, if we can measure the, the, the amount of chlorophyll in the water is a direct correlation to the amount of biomass or the amount of fish tissue swimming around in that lake. Okay. Okay. So if you see a lake just visually with your eye, that's a pea soup green and it's not, there's not from weeds or anything else. It's just like the water is a green color. Right. You know what I mean? We have all seen that lake. That's plankton bloom. Okay. Okay. And that's indicative of, to me, when I see that green water, I think there's a lot of fish in there. Okay. Because there's a lot of chlorophyll. In so that you water. would say just before you know, just kind of on your own, just a healthy lake. Yep. You walk okay. up to a lake and look at it and the water's real clear. I don't know. It's going to be, let's put it this way. The average in Georgia, okay, if you took all the ponds, they can support 100 pounds of fish per acre okay. on the average, okay? A green lake is going to be a little higher than that, okay? And a clear lake is going to be a little lower than that, okay? But that's how that works, okay? Right. Um, so we go, we go phytoplankton, then we go zooplankton, mm -hmm. okay? Then we go aquatic insects. And again, there's an entire food web of several hundred species of aquatic insects that all live in the bottom, all, some of them filter the water, some of them eat each other. Like a dragonfly larva is a perfect example. A dragonfly stays a larva for three years on the bottom of a pond. Are before, you serious? Yeah, before it emerges. And you want to talk about a mean critter. <laughs> <laughs> a dragonfly larva has a piercing, sucking mouth part. It's a needle. Oh, my goodness. And they catch their prey, and they stick that thing, and they suck the guts out of them. That's how a dragonfly larva feeds. And then just leaves it the rest of them. just leaves the exoskeleton with nothing in it. Sounds like them big old things in War of the Worlds, that movie. It, it's very <laughs> similar to that. They are, and, and I've actually been stung by a dragonfly larva. It actually got me. And Seriously? They, they really light you up. You'll be surprised how much that hurts. I don't know that I've ever seen one. Or if I've seen it, I don't know what I'm looking at. That's more yeah. like, the, like, I don't know what I'm looking at. But Yeah, they're big. Okay. They're, like, they're like that big. Okay. All yeah. right. I'm going to take your word for it. Yeah. Okay, so we got we got a sidetrack there on our dragonfly log. Right, Let okay, me get yeah. back to aquatic insects. Okay, got gotcha. you. Okay, um, so the bluegill eat the aquatic insects. Okay. okay, that's their primary source of food, and the bass eat the bluegill in, in just your basic setup. You okay. know what I mean? Um, and that completes our food chain. And the amount of fish that the lake can hold is called biomass. Okay. Okay. And it'd be uh, the, just the total numbers of fish. And that, and that gets back into like, let's let's use your grandfather's lake as an example. You had a one acre lake, right? Growing up as a kid. Didn't you tell me that? Yeah, my dad had one. Your dad had my one. My dad had one, yeah. There we go. All right. So we take that one acre lake and we stock it just with bluegill. Okay. No bass, no predators, nothing. Just bait fish. What's going to happen to that lake is those fish are going to spawn but there's nothing to consume their numbers. There's nothing to slow them down and they're going to stunt. They're going to, they're going to overcrowd. Okay. And at that point when they're so overcrowded that they're literally starving to death, they'll actually, some fish will release a pheromone where they'll stop breeding altogether. Um, gizzard shadow that way, bluegill that way, uh, a few, few different fish, but, um, they'll get stunted. And one easy way to tell if a, of, if a bluegill population is stunted is there'll be a small bluegill about this big, um, like maybe two, three fingers if you're on the radio, not, not looking at me. Um, but their eyes will be very large, big ass, big, fish. huge eye. Yeah. And that's an indication of a stunted fish because the, the eye continues to grow. Okay. Okay. So we stocked your dad's lake and it's one acre and we came back in a year or two years or five years. I don't care how long. And we drain that lake down. It's going to be full of stunted fish. They're going to look terrible, but we're going to have about a hundred pounds of them. In an acre because in that, that's what it can because be. that's what the biomass in Georgia holds. Okay, if you want more fish, you need to add fertilizer or a starter feeding program. Okay, okay. Um, so take the same pond, drain it down, stock it with bluegill and bass, in, in the right balance, like we've always talked about. Right, and what will happen then is we can go out and we'll catch various sizes of bluegill, we'll catch various sizes of bass. They'll all look healthy. They'll all be the right relative weight. Everything will be happy. You know what I mean? Right. But you drain that lake down and you weigh all the fish in it, you're still going to have 100 pounds of fish. Because that's what the biomass that's, that's what, what the it does. biomass holds. Right. So if you want more fish in a lake, you need a guy like me. You need to feed and fertilize and add energy. Um, you won't have any more fish in a lake just from simply like adding Christmas trees. 
you know, that's not how that works. Oh, okay. So you're saying that there is a, a mathematical formula or something that says, okay, X plus this equals this, and it's basically, on average, going to be close every single time without adding energy or feed. So, I yep. mean, 100, 100 pounds it's is about 100 an average. pounds yep. is 100 pounds. Like, no you're going to get, you know, probably uh, North Georgia, you might see, you know, like 80 pounds per acre on your clear water lakes. Okay. South Georgia, you know, you get the fertilizer runoff and stuff like that. You're going to see, um, you know, maybe 120, 130 pounds of fish per acre. But to really push, to really get it going, you're going to have to either – feed or fertilize to bring that and i'm talking about like on a fed pond i'll be holding 400 pounds of fish per acre okay and that's just because you're you're adding the energy i'm adding to the it. energy to it and 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 that additional energy translates into biomass okay so you go to a someone like you that's in the business of of looking at these waters and tell them what you know what needs to happen and stuff like that what would be the first test Maybe the eyeball test. Let's say you walk up on like the first time. Would it be the color of the water? Sure. You mentioned that's your sure. first eyeball the test. The first, my eyeball test right there is, tells me a lot. A mm-hmm. green lake is a fertile lake. It has a lot of chlorophyll there. For, or it has a lot of biomass. Okay, that's awesome. You know, what? what's interesting, in, and I'm going to bring up Latham, yeah. because that's by my house and a lot of our viewers know it. You know, in and of itself, Latham is a very clear lake. Mm-hmm. And I have a uh, report from... Uh, one of the managers that ran it, he gave me a, a history of the lake. And in and of itself, it says in that report that that lake is not fertile. That lake is not. Mm-hmm. And there's words that I wish I had it with me, but there's words in it that says, you know. that Low productivity. Yeah, basically. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if that lake was left up into itself, the fish would never get, as we know them, you know, they're very healthy now. But that started when they started adding thread fin and they started a feeding program for the, uh, you know, they've got fish feeders around for the brim. And ever since they kind of started doing stuff like that, now they have, everybody knows the reputation of Latham and sure. the fish that's in it. Sure. If they well, stopped all that, it would probably go right back due to the type of water, the type of land that's over. Sure. Like this, that's what you're saying when you're talking about adding. And I was just using that as a real life example. Yep. Um, now, don't get it mixed up though. Okay. But just because a lake is rated low productivity. Okay. Doesn't mean it doesn't have big fish. Right. Okay. Because right. if the balance is correct. It can right. still do it. It'll they'll still you can have great fishing in a low productivity you know place. It's just there's not quite as many fish per acre, but if the balance of the fish is there, if the if the bass are eating the right amount of food, they'll still be big bass in lo, in low productivity water. There just won't be as many. Okay, you see, I got what you're saying. Yeah, because that mm-hmm. report it was very interesting because you know the the people in the know will say that you know it's really not that great of a lake water quality wise as far as yeah, they're talking, what primary productivity is what they're talking about. And they're saying that, yeah, as far as like, uh, you know, if you were to go someplace else, you know, in the, in the say the water hardness, there's a little more limestone. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit more, better water quality. There's these certain things that we can do to, you know, enhance that biomass. Then, yeah, if it was naturally occurring, then, yeah, that lake could hold, you know, it's probably just a little bit low due to probably clay. Um, way back you know, 200 years ago, Georgia used to have a big, thick, dark, rich soil layer and poor um, forestry practices. Um, they cut all the trees down and all that ran off into the ocean. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so we're on the, the clay level. Our clay should be eight feet under black dirt. There's just no more black dirt here. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's an interesting point that I didn't think about. Yeah, so our, our entire... You know, when you think about the water filtering through all the organic material, all the nutrients that would have been picked up in that black soil, is not there anymore. Okay, you know, right. so that makes our productivity a little lower. Um, but again, easily, a guy like me can fix that really fast. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And if somebody wanted to get in touch with you to fix that problem, how would they get in touch <laughs> with you? Uh, email uh, Shannon Gorman at Gmail um, or. Facebook or Instagram, same thing, Shannon Gorman. Okay. And uh, yeah, we'll put some links. Place. Yeah, we'll put some links down uh, in the comments section uh, or the description section of this video. So, okay. again, man, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Fish North Georgia podcast. If y'all have any topics or guests you'd like to see in the future, leave it in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button, click that bell so that you'll be notified of any future videos. And don't forget to give us a follow on Facebook and Instagram at Fish North Georgia. And we look forward to seeing you soon.